And uh, she also had a reference for me from another groomer that she had worked with, so after that I was in. Um, but I did have to do my time. And, you know, if, if you want to keep a dog like this in coat, it is a big commitment. Um, so bathing, drying, um, conditioning in between. Um, she probably only gets done once a month, but her dogs normally are once a week. Uh, <laughs> most of her dogs with a lot more coat. When I had the other one, it was every three days. Bathe, blow dry, brush out. Um, you can't get away with any less than that. It's just not going to happen. They mat in their armpits. They mat in their chests. Um, she, she got done out Wednesday or Thursday when I talked to her, and she still had some little tangles starting right here at the back of her feet here and here. So you really have to, even with this little bit of coat, um, she still has to get done every single week. Um, and I'm sure probably when she gets shown, she gets done more than that. Um, but some of, when, I, when I talk about the differences between what we do and what breeders do, um, this has been kind of something that makes me feel bad because when I speak about it, sometimes people think it's a negative thing. It's not, it's just a different thing. So this back coat would not be acceptable in grooming competition, okay? She just came back three weeks ago. And I know that all of this didn't grow in three weeks. Some of the undercoat did, but in grooming competition, they want to, when you go through this and card this out, they want it to be shorter and flatter and tighter to know that you're keeping up with that dog's coat. When they show the dog, they want it to look good that day. They want that dog done. They want it finished. They want his championship. If she was going to special her, she would keep growing her and keep working on it. And then as soon as they're done, they're done. Okay. People can tell you all they want that these dogs should look like this. I've had people come on my Schnauzer video on YouTube and be like, why'd you cut that dog down? You're not supposed to do that to her. I'm like, she's 14 years old. I'm not hand stripping her anymore. Yeah. When I stopped hand stripping her when she was like nine and started cutting her down because I'm not going to do that to her. Um, so no matter what anybody says to you, you know, she's getting shaved with a 10 blade. Everything but her ears before I take her home. So it's, it's beautiful and it's lovely, uh, but this is not something that people normally keep their dogs in. If, if they only have one dog and they only have one life and that's all they want to do, then that's great. But that's not what happens. My poodles get taken down. You know, she's got one poodle, so she keeps him like that, and that's great. But when I'm showing my poodles, as soon as they're done, they go back. Even Because I show you, Casey, half of them go into a modern trim by the time they're a year and a half or two years old. Or a modified continental or something like that. Because I like my dogs to be dogs. Um, and these dogs live in a beautiful kennel and they're very well cared for. But, you know, it is her operation and this dog will get cut down. And if she's going to keep her, she'll keep her. If not, she's going to um, probably a breeding home or maybe even a pet home if they decided not to breed her. It just depends. Um, but this is just not, no matter what anybody says, this is what we do so we know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So we understand the breed standard. And then after that, you can do whatever you like. Oh, well. <laughs> Somebody's grumbling in there. Um, something that the uh, show breeders also don't do is they don't generally shave out pads of feet on spaniels, which I tend to do a little bit more because of grooming competition. And again, that's something, if you have one of these dogs and they're sensitive to you shaving out the pads of your feet, you need to point that out to your judge. This is a show dog that's never had their feet their foot pads shaved out before, so they understand that you didn't leave that hair in there on purpose, because that's one of the differences. Um, they also don't shave hoochie coochies, testicles, or penises. Okay, they don't do that. It's actually protection for them. I made the mistake of like one of the first dogs that I groomed for her was a female, and I when I cut her down with the ten, I also shaved her hoo ha. It was bright red and this big around by the next day because she'd never had it trimmed. It was 10 blade. She'd never had it trimmed before. So all of a sudden she's now in her kennel going, you know, and rubbing it because it feels weird, you know, so she made it sore. Um, so, you know, she said, please don't do that. Just go around it next time. And she said, and then I'll deal with it. I'm like, okay, you know. So there's, there's a lot of differences in what, you know, show breeders do as opposed to uh, groom, groomers doing grooming competition. Um, and some of those things cross over eventually. But uh, the reason I wanted you to come see this back coat, because I also want you to see what happens when this is done properly.
That's three weeks in a spot that big. See what happens? See how it starts to get a little bit shinier? It starts to lay down. You can actually make this coat on the back of their neck lay down by doing that. Um, so one of the reasons that the coat here and here is kind of sticking up is because that's where it's been thinning sheared before or something has happened. The collar has broken it off. See how it's sticking up? You can make it lay down. See? That's why we do this. It also clears out the pores. It takes out all this dead. You can feel that. That's the fluff. That's just soft fluff. That's not this nice, hard back coat. That's what we want to see. That is all just dead stuff. And what that does is it clears out the pores. It makes room for more coarse hair. The more you stimulate this coat, just like hand stripping with the terriers, the more you stimulate this coat, and get that dead fluff out, the more of this wonderful, lovely top coat you'll get. And it'll be nice and bright and black. Or red if you have a buff, just like yours. Um, the more you do this, the better this coat will lay. <coughs> the cleaner the skin will be. You won't find as much of the, the that like little flaky stuff. Um, when I'm working a cocker to take to grooming competition, this gets, this part gets done every single week until like four. If she grows that much in three weeks, I would probably do her, I would do this up to three weeks before the competition. I wouldn't mess with any of this stuff because we need to trim that and show them that we know what we're doing. But this stuff, if I can get this out in three weeks, that's what I would do because this is still going to take me, if I was going to do all of her, that would, you know, I get, you get two and a half hours and I'm not even partially done. So it would probably take me almost a good 30 minutes just to card out her back properly. So that, was, that would eat up too much of my time if I let her go longer than that. So even though the rules say, you know, eight weeks or six weeks, you also have to know your dog. You also have to know how long it takes you. Um, so now you're practicing this every week, you know how long this part should take you. So when you let it go three or four weeks, add on an extra 10, 15 minutes, you know exactly how long that part of the groom is going to take you. But you literally just keep doing this and work your way in different sections. I have a tendency to go down the back and then curve down the sides because we also want, we don't want to bring this down too far. So I have a tendency to pull all of this stuff down on the top first in different sections. And then a lot of times you'll find if you get a lot of this going, you may have to come with your comb and pull all the dead stuff off because your knife will stick. And that's, that's perfectly normal as well. But we call this hand stripping on cockers, but it's, it's really carding out. You don't generally hand strip a lot of anything unless uh, one of hers that I did for a long time had a big cow lick right here. And so I actually would come in and, and grab some hairs and like whatever would come out, pull it out so it would lay in that direction. You can do that, but this is, this is mostly a carding breed. You just card out all this dead stuff and all the nice, coarse, darker black, shinier black stuff lays down on the top. And then you can, you can card the top of the tail too, but be careful not to take too much of this out so you end up with a little dip before the tail. You normally will come in there with, you'll also see that sticks mm -hmm. up a little bit. That's because we come in there with thinning shears and make that lay down as opposed to carding it all out because then you're gonna make a hole. But you do need to card it a little bit so it stays healthy. And even, even on cockers that I clipper them, I will, before I cut them, about every other grooming, I'll go and card, go through and card through their back. Yep. 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 
Thank yeah, you. and it also cuts down on your clipper lines because you've got all of this. This is what makes clipper lines right there. So even if you're clippering, so it's going to be a really nice finishing touch. Yeah, if they will tolerate it, terriers and spaniels, do that. If they're coming monthly, do it at least every other month because that'll cut down on your, this is what makes the clipper lines. That's what sticks in your clippers because it's, it's soft. Yep. And that's what, pull, that's what gathers the dander. So those are, those are the things that cause your clipper lines on your terriers and your spaniels, even if you're clippering them. If they'll tolerate the carding, then, you know, go ahead and do it a little bit just to help keep their skin healthier, cut down on, you'll have a nice smooth clipper. And always, always grab the skin <coughs> and the fur in front of where you're working so you're not yanking on them. And as you can see, she's had this done since she was probably eight to 10 weeks old. You know, Lindy starts doing just a little bit and so there, she's used to it. So you may find, you know, you may find, you may run into dogs that just won't tolerate it especially some of the cockers that aren't bred well and they've never had it done. Don't forget it, you know, it's not a big deal. But if you have a nice one like this that you're working on, even if they end up getting clippered, just get all that dead stuff out of there.